Does the new FCC proceeding spell the end of amateur radio? We'll share our thoughts coming up. This is Ham Radio. Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR from Ham Radio Prep. On March 12th, the FCC released a public notice called Delete, Delete, Delete. While that may sound alarming, let's be clear. Nothing's changing right now. This notice is simply the FCC's way of gathering feedback on possible changes within its jurisdiction. Now, that includes the public airwaves, telecommunications, and of course, amateur radio regulations in the US. The FCC has outlined key areas for review including cost considerations, marketplace changes, barriers to entry created by regulation, and potential changes to the regulatory framework. Notice that most of these focus on the marketplace, so much of the FCC's work will likely be surrounding commercial radio and broadcast areas. So what does this mean for amateur radio? Let's break it down, but first a quick disclaimer. We are not lawyers. Most of our insights are based on prior experience and analysis, but it's clear the FCC is looking to shake things up. So consider this our crystal ball look at what could happen. Amateur radio exists within the broader marketplace for spectrum. Now, spectrum refers to the radio frequencies that are allocated for use. For example, the 144 to 148 megahertz segment, also known as the two meter band, is part of the amateur radio spectrum allocation. Hams have privileges across 17 plus bands, covering everything from 136 kilohertz to 10 gigahertz. That spans from low frequency navigation beacons to high frequency satellite communications. Some of that spectrum is valuable to other industries. For instance, wireless carriers have an insatiable appetite for spectrum and pay billions to the FCC and Spectrum auctions to acquire it. In 2024, a wireless auction raised nearly half a billion dollars for the U.S. Treasury. Now, certain ham bands like 900 megahertz could be at risk of being reclaimed from amateur radio and put up for auction. The 1.25 meter or 220 megahertz area is another spot to watch. Back in 1998, the FCC auctioned off adjacent spectrum for over $2 million. Another area of potential concern is the HF bands. Some financial firms have started using high frequency trading over HF to reduce latency compared to fiber optics. While demand hasn't been overwhelming, if interest grows, there could be pressure to reallocate HF spectrum. The amateur radio licensing system is already efficient Volunteer Examiner Coordinators, or VECs, submit their applications directly to the FCC. License modifications are handled online, so overall, administrative costs are relatively low. In 2022, a $35 application fee was introduced for new licenses, renewals, and vanity call signs. So Congress mandated this fee so it can't just be changed by the FCC without their legislative approval. Now, at $3.50 per year, an amateur radio license is still cheaper than a fancy cup of coffee, so arguing it's too expensive may not hold a lot of weight. Could we see other license changes? Let's think about it. Lifetime licenses? Maybe. 20-year license instead of 10 years? Possible. But major structural changes seem unlikely. Could the FCC completely end the amateur radio service? Again, we're not lawyers, but to us, this seems unlikely. We'll share our reasoning. First, emergency communications. With over 700,000 trained operators, amateur radio provides crucial backup during disasters. Look at the Mount Mitchell repeater's role in helping communications during Hurricane Helene. That's a big example in amateur radio's favor. International regulations. The FCC coordinates with the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, on global band plans. If the U.S. suddenly abandoned amateur radio band plans, it could disrupt international spectrum planning. Here's an example. Let's say abandoned the U.S. became focused on high-power HF, while in the ITU, 
Other countries were using it for public safety. Imagine that kind of big disruption if those things are changed. Political influence is another area. Amateur radio has a strong base of politically engaged users. While we won't dive into politics, let's just say many policymakers support amateur radio. One potential target for deregulation is a rule called PRB1. It's a rule that impacts state and local governments. The FCC rule prevents state and local governments from discriminating against amateur radio antennas compared to commercial towers. If PRB1 is eliminated, it would fit the FCC's local control narrative, but it could make it harder for hams to install antennas in some areas. And what about HOA restrictions? For years, amateur radio operators have pushed for laws preventing HOAs from banning antennas. Unfortunately, the delete, delete, delete agenda probably won't include protections for HOA residents, so just be careful where you move. The FCC's new delete, delete, delete agenda could bring big changes to amateur radio, but nothing has been decided yet. Here's our key takeaways. Spectrum is most at risk. The FCC has a long history of auctioning off Spectrum to generate revenue. In 2025 alone, the FCC will contribute $16 billion to the U.S. Treasury. So selling Spectrum for them remains a priority. Licensing tweaks are possible. The FCC could extend license terms or adjust fees, but major changes seem unlikely. And amateur radio probably isn't going away, but we could lose certain protections like PRB1 for antenna regulations. So what can you do? Well, submit your feedback to the FCC. We'll link these below, but you're gonna go to the FCC.gov site to submit a filing. Use proceeding number 25-133 for your comments. You can also provide feedback to Congress. Your representatives and senators have influence at the FCC. Make sure you stay updated as this progresses. We'll publish updates as we get more information. Follow us at Ham Radio Prep on social media, or just check back here for more. And if you want to get your ham radio license, don't forget to visit us at hamradioprep.com. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.